Hey everybody, Beyondrew TV here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Thornton Hill Zoo. So today, as you can probably already tell, is a little bit different of an episode where we're not really looking at any time lapse today. Uh, unfortunately, I did get time lapse recorded, but it's not very usable at all and would take uh, kind of a long time to piece together. Uh, just because I was uh, I was recording most of the day yesterday and uh, I was kind of watching uh, my puppy at the same time and then we were getting snow, like a whole bunch of snow coming in, so we were getting ready for that. So I was recording and playing Planet Zoo kind of off and on all day and recording off and on and it would have just been a heck of a mess to kind of put together so I kind of thought it would be easier and actually a little bit more fun because we're kind of getting to the point where it'd be kind of fun to show off the zoo is uh, we're gonna go in here and guest guest view here in Tejid Cam uh, and we're gonna get just kind of walk around the zoo and kind of show off what we have going on here so here we are at our entrance area here and we'll kind of walk through and we've shown all this off here our completed entrance way we're gonna take a left towards all of the new stuff. So in the episode before this, remember we showed off the uh, the bear cage, or the uh, the former bear uh, cage and everything like that, and this new gift shop on the right side and stuff like that. And thanks to those that commented uh, saying that we should put some, so a cover, like a, a an iron grate or something like that over top of the bear cage. We're definitely gonna do that. Uh, I'm gonna keep that in my back pocket and remember to do that at some point. And that we should put a, um, over here we should put a handicap entrance, uh, like a slight uh, incline up into here because it's kind of on a decline down so that's also a very very good idea so thank you those of you those of you that commented i appreciate that and uh yeah if anyone else has ideas as we're rolling through here maybe there's something i kind of overlooked definitely comment below i do uh appreciate the uh comments and suggestions there and sometimes use them so we're coming back over here next to our old uh, or not older education building there and then on our right we're gonna start to see some new stuff here so let's kind of speed forward just a little bit so here we are. So today's episode, even though we didn't get to see a time lapse of it, um, we didn't miss a whole lot. Um, we added in some large hooved animal. Ex oh gosh, they're so busy today. There's so many. There, there it is. Look at the camel. <laughs> so we added in a camel uh, uh, habitat here. And again, this is nothing spectacular at all, and that is purposeful. If you remember at the end of the last episode, we were talking about what I wanted to add in here, and it's basically these are the older, um, this could be the older style uh, pens and I guess uh, habitats, because uh, it's the older part of the zoo overall, and it's kind of the part that's going to be in transition uh, for the most part. So uh, again, I, I kind of mentioned last time, but we're not going to do a lot of these kind of pens where it's kind of the older style and really out of date for the most part. We won't do too many of these, um, but we are going to do some of them in the older part of the zoo, and then as we transition over to the newer part, it will uh, we'll get those really really nice modern kind of habitats that are really well suited for the uh, animals needs and uh, the guest needs as well so um, but some some small things to take away from here this was uh, m modeled after the Brookfield Zoo and I use that a lot in my references if you uh, are new to the channel you'll hear me, hear me probably reference the Brookfield Zoo a lot uh, it's my home zoo there so um, and I know that Mass Bandit uh, John he uh, created something similar to almost exactly like this in the beta already and that's because um, Brookfield's used to be his home zoo as well so him and I um, we, we kind of try not to use the same references all the time you'll see some crossover sometimes it's kind of funny but um, you can kind of see this little uh, oh that's so funny that he hit that and it's all dangling over I never noticed that um, you kind of see this little uh, decline down right there into a wall here and, it, and that kind of uh, is for I think a guest view and for the animal to uh, you know not get out it's kind of a, a almost like a natural barrier but you can see that you know obviously has the wall kind of blocking but the way that the, it kind of goes down right here and you can't really tell from a guest view over here that um it declines down right there um yeah just kind of notice that from looking at the um the google maps image there of uh the habitat they uh, kind of had that feature and it works nicely they can't jump over that at all or anything so totally or that girl yelling then uh they have a little uh hard to uh, space over here hard terrain space over here not terrain not building there it is hard shelter over here we have two of them so one out here in the uh in the yard and then kind of like a this would be i guess where they would take the animal if they have to like bring it back to like a uh, you know a vet or anything like that but otherwise i think they mostly stay on um on the exhibit for the most part just kind of this they're sleeping area there so there's our camels we have uh, one male and three female i believe one is pregnant and uh right when that female became pregnant i uh, Turned, uh, turned that off, made sure the male can't uh, <laughs> give birth anymore. So there is that one there, and then we're gonna whip behind me before looking, there's one more kind of similar to it, but we kind of are passing by our creepy things building. So yeah, we added our first little house here, and it is very small, and I did this kind of purposely. This would have been, uh, for the zoo at least, this would have been uh, kind of a, uh, 
kind of a 90s to 2000s uh, building that they would have added in. Um, because as I've been looking through uh, master plans, I noticed that a lot of zoos were kind of going through a flux of different master plans um, between like kind of the early 90s to the 2000s. And then a lot of those same zoos or um, a lot of zoos in particular just kind of in the 2000s uh, had new master plans come out. So it just seems like a lot of zoos, they went from, you know, having kind of a transition period in the 90s to 2000s and then having to turn around again and transition the zoo to keep up with the ever-evolving knowledge of you know animals and stuff like that so i just thought that this whole area that we're looking at here would just kind of be a little bit behind the times overall especially you know like this building and the pens and stuff like that um and just kind of that's kind of the whole lore and story back here but yeah this is our creepy things building it's i'm not doing interiors for the most part um so it's, there's nothing really in here. There's three habitats. There's uh, We have cockroaches, uh, centipede, and some form of spider. But uh, I'm not really doing interiors. I, I think uh, Geekism, or Jaunty, he said it best where, you know, interiors are amazing. And if you, know, if you can pull them off well, then they work super duper well. But you only look at them that one time, really, when you're doing the interior. And then you don't really go back there again. So, again, while interiors are amazing, and I think we'll do maybe a handful that are like, you know, giant houses, like a primate house, maybe, I don't know, we, we might do something different with our primates, or, um, you know, like a, a bayou house, or something like that, sure, but, you know, small ones like this, like a creepy things house, I'm not going to do like a full interior for it, that's just a waste of uh, overall computing power, really, because <laughs> when you're going to start to get a lot of guests in the park, and a lot of... Uh, a lot of pieces and buildings and stuff like that, that all starts to really add up there. So you gotta kind of watch what you build almost in, in, in a sense. So um, let's look at the last little thing that we added here, the last animal. So we added two animals today. That's to make up for the no animals that we added last time. So maybe you can see them there. There they are. We have the Okapi. So this uh, pen is, or this habitat is basically identical to the camel one and we'll get an overhead shot of everything um, before the episode is out there no worries there so you can kind of see overhead but yeah again it's basically identical to the camel pen and you'll just you'll see these a lot of times in again I know the Brookfield Zoo has done it I think the Houston Zoo as well um, has them similar um, I'm not sure there's probably other uh, zoos in the, uh, the US and stuff like that that have these similar but uh, it's just a way to kind of in a way smash as many animals as you can in like a short um, uh, short little area so you know you just have this big open field with uh, some enrichment items and that's where they uh, hang out all day so again just re um, reinstating that this is not like what modern zoos are kind of uh, known for and this is not what modern zoos try and strive for they uh, they really look like they're kind of transitioning into more of a you know, thinking of the animal's habitat and where they're from first and putting them in that sort of environment and then thinking of the guests and stuff like that. So um, so this is just kind of a harken back to a, uh, a sort of older, I guess you'd say almost, way that uh, the habitats were designed there. So let's go ahead and boop out real quick. Boop. Or where to boop us at? Oh, the entrance way. Okay, here we are. So let's go ahead and fly over this way here so you can kind of get some good views of the zoo overhead, see how far we're coming. And then you can see the uh, this is the area that we worked on right here. So there are the two uh, habitats split right through here down the middle there. Use some uh, some natural rock work in between in the little valley, I guess you'd call it right here, between the two pens. Use just a little bit of rock work to separate them out, but you can see there's the fence line right there. So yeah, both exhibits are the uh, the exact same, even though this one's diagonal across, they are both the exact same, uh, you know, space and all that fun stuff. So the plan is uh, to go ahead and make two more over here. One of them will be functioning, the other won't be, and I'll explain why in the next episode why that one won't be. So, and then the uh, the last little bit, ooh, I'm kind of whipping the camera on a little bit a lot here. Um, we have this space over here and I have a few different ideas, maybe to put a house here, maybe just to put nothing there. Uh, maybe to put um, another kind of older 90s to early 2000s habitat there. Not really too sure though. I'd like to hear um, those of you that make it this far in the video. Haha, this is a test to see who the true Beyondru TV fans are. <laughs> to see who makes it this far in the video. Uh, but what do you think? Should we put a, you know, an open air habitat? Maybe something similar to this? Um, maybe something just a little bit more themed up, but it still has that 90s to early 2000s habitat vibe or you know maybe we can put like a bigger kind of house right here what do you think what do you think over there when I hear your feedback so and then the last thing I got a really quick uh, start on uh, haven't even really flushed out all that much as you can see over here 
This is another idea from the Brookfield Zoo. Uh, this, I'm going to really try not to take, uh, I'm not going to do a recreation of the Brookfield Zoo, but uh, I'm gonna, and I'm also not going to try and take a, uh, too many things of inspiration, but this is just a giant um, promenade, basically. And uh, the Brookfield Zoo has this where it's, uh, you see this in gardens a lot, and that's what a lot of zoos are gardens, and I think the Brookfield Zoo uh, is basically a, a garden itself. But they have these giant promenades with, you know, trees lining the, uh, the way and stuff like that. And um, there's not really a lot to anything to them, except for that, where they're just open grassy areas basically just like a separate park or you know you just go hang out so i kind of think that'd be uh, really neat to kind of throw that in there for this zoo as well since this is an older uh, style zoo with a lot of lore and a lot of history to it so but no there we go so overall my friends that is what we did today for thornton hills zoo let's go ahead and for the uh, as we wrap it up here look at some animals i, I keep i keep uh, forgetting to look at the animals more in the uh, in the animal game so but hey yeah um the, for the next few episodes there like i said i want to hear your feedback on oh, well bless you sir um i want to hear your feedback for what we should do with that um area across from the pens here for across from the exhibits um as you can see i need to kind of uh, shape up and uh, tie in the backstage areas here I do want to keep all the staff buildings in this area. I think it'd be that's a good spot for them um, all around. They can hit up all these uh, exhibits over here, and they can have the flamingos and a few other areas, the small exhibits as well. But um, I have to kind of theme that up. But uh, yeah, so there's a lot to do in the next coming episodes. So yeah, uh, there's uh, there's a lot to do just overall. <laughs> so cool. Hey, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. And uh, yeah, thanks so much, everyone, for hanging out. I always appreciate it. And until the next episode of Thornton Hill Zoo, y'all have a good one. Thanks so much.